So, I'm at TEDx Rotterdam now. I'm gonna take you on the journey with me. And we're gonna check some stuff out. As you can see, it's uh, pretty fancy. So, uh, I think they have like every month one uh, event. Really cool people show up. I got uh, my crew badge. I got the opportunity to film a little bit and uh, look how many people there are. It's crazy. Look at the views. This is what I love about Rotterdam. Those views are pretty epic. Uh, let's go deeper into the event now. that you have a you know, clear set of objectives and, and, and achievable goals, relatively short term, and then supported by a consistent set of actions to actually go there. And a warm applause for Arun from Nerland. It's not just the children and elderly who are affected by us, but also a huge amount of working age, like me and you, who are affected. What that truly means is uh, a massive level of loss in economic output from lost labor as well as spending money to take care of people who are dying because of this. Uh, the World Bank came up with a figure to estimate the cost. And this is the figure they came up with. It's 5.1 trillion. That's 5.1 billion with three zeros followed. It is six times the GDP of Netherlands. Just think about it. And it's not going to get any better because of urbanization and population growth. The surface area has a special paint painted on it, and we pump in the pollutant, mainly NOx, which is which was the pollutant that you saw earlier, and we pump it up to saturation and through the whole uh, whole test. And then, as we switch on the light, you see this quite an immediate reduction in pollution, and this is because the hydroxy radicals are formed, and just like in the troposphere, how it's neutralizing the pollutants, it's doing the same thing. And when the light is off. It doesn't have the energy to create it and it becomes passive. It sounds almost too good to be true, but the, but the reality is in our hands. Thank you for your time. So, education for the next economy. Uh, John Abbott, in this book which he published recently called uh, Overschooled and Undereducated, said that the real purpose <coughs> of education is to take the pupil and turn them into a good citizen, someone who can thrive on unstructured tasks. And without that background, let's look at how the education system has been doing. Back in 2014, the London School of Economics found a mismatch between what university graduates were being given and what business wants. The problem with our education system in most Western countries is that it was designed in the Industrial Revolution 
when it was fit for purpose in the 19th century. And if you were to look today at our education system and ask who survives, who are the people who are successful going through the education system, then the answer is university professors. And if we look at the roadmap for the next economy, the one thing we don't need are more university professors. When we look at the next economy, to paraphrase a quote often attributed to Einstein, we're going to need new thinking. Yes, we are going to need engineers, we're going to need current uh, knowledge and theory, but we're also going to need an entrepreneurial spirit. We're going to need creativity. We're going to need innovation. And our schools are going to have to encourage this. Some people have said we're living in the sixth wave of innovation. Some people talk about the fourth industrial revolution. But what we see in the modern uh, world is that more and more different sciences are collaborating with each other to create new solutions. So what we need in our schools is to encourage our young people to nurture their innate ability to innovate and create. Pablo Picasso once said, it's not a question of how to be creative when you're an adult, it is how to remain creative from the time you're born through the school system and keep your creativity when you're older. And we need to teach them how to become entrepreneurial, even in schools, not to wait until they finish university to become entrepreneurs. And finally, at schools, we need to teach them to learn how to learn. The fast-changing world of the 21st century means that we can't just go to school and then say, well, we finished our education. We need to continually go back and relearn. So we need to teach children how to learn, not just uh, how to uh, recite things that they've been taught. To summarize, I believe that our education for the next economy needs to be versatile, it needs to be creative, and it needs to be fleet of foot. And that way we can build a green economy. Thank you. Marks about innovation because it's a fascinating process. Uh, it's like making a movie. And the innovator or group of innovators, they have the idea. They, they already see it happen. And you, but then the problem starts because you have to find money, you have to find the crew, you have to find the location. Oh, everything you have to organize and you find out that the real key issue is to find the right people. If you don't find the right group of people to make your movie to a real success, it's a failure. The other important thing of course is that you need money and because no matter how you do it, how low cost, you need money. And to find money, especially in a very early state, is a very slow and tiresome process. Uh, sometimes you become a little bit impatient because you see the movie already as it has to be, but you have to convince other people, especially financial people, of course, they are very often selected to be not passionate. <laughs> so it's a little bit a mismatch. <laughs> so in that respect, to find money is an interesting challenge. But patience and perseverance helps a lot. Some more remarks. If in this process, although it takes long and you have to explain many times your idea, it's always effective, even if the result is, for instance, no money. You learn a lot. A warm applause for Jonas Martins from the Better Hi. So I want to start with this. Uh, this is a chair made from scrap wood. What you need is a few nails and some polish, maybe some sanding paper and a pen some time. I think material-wise it's worth about maximum 20 euros. How much do you think this costs in the shop? Does anybody has an answer? 100? More? It is actually 2,000 euros. You have one, okay. <laughs> well, the idea behind this is the perception of value, and that's what I kind of want to talk about.
the event just finished and uh, I'm packing up and going to the studio now. Hey there, welcome to day six. And no, we're not in the studio, but we're here at this magnificent bridge. And what better way to have the analogy of the Green River mindset than at this bridge. So the Green River mindset, you've just seen the TEDx Rotterdam event. All of this wealth and knowledge around people and their products and building a company. The Green River mindset is a systems mindset that tells that there's so many transactions going on in right now, online, offline, you see so many transactions of people and businesses going on. There is so much money you don't even understand. Just look at the deficit of the US for instance and you'll just see that there's so much money going on. So Timothy Mark actually, that's who I am got it from, he's my mentor and he taught me that your job as an entrepreneur is to build a system or a business that kind of channels those transactions from the river into your life so that you can sustain your lifestyle and hopefully just like TEDx inspire some people and bring some value to people in such a way that it actually feeds your life as well because money is only a value transaction and that's very important to remember if you bring value to people in a form of a job or business or anything you are giving something to people and in return you're getting other value back which is money so it's very important to know that whatever you do there is the green river there's this beautiful bridge as well but it's your job to build a system that channels some of that green river to you we're gonna look into that and we're gonna go deeper into that but why TEDx Rotterdam actually really fits what we're talking about today is just to show that if you stick with an idea for long enough and you actually solve a problem and bring value to people it'll end up sufficing you it'll end up bringing you some kind of green transaction and with that I want to close day six I'm so happy that you're still here with me on day six I'm so excited for tomorrow day seven where we're gonna start and finish the last idea of week one which is the mindset week thank you so much for being here with me and I'll see you next time um, by the way talking about gear and being fancy look where my camera has been standing on just to show it really doesn't matter what you do as long as your story and your message are there and you're bringing value to people good luck and I'll see you tomorrow on day seven